Christmas and happy holidays and great to see some people in the room and some uh, new faces as well uh, behind the dais. Uh, we have the roll call, please. Yes, Mr. Chair, calling roll for the Tuesday, December 13th, Ward 5 Neighborhood Advisory Meeting. Bear is absent at this time. Borchard? Here. Thessel? Here. Chisholm? Here. You, Crane? Here. Uh, George Foster is no longer on this board. Will we remove from future agenda items? Goff? Absent at this time. Meek? Absent at this time. Rossi? Delighted to be here. And uh, also present is council member Kathleen Taylor and city of Reno staff. Mr. Chair, you do have a quorum of the Ward 5 neighborhood. Thank you very much. So we'll go to item A2, public comment. So this is not uh, necessarily related to any agenda item, but we'll start in the room. Uh, if there's anybody who would like to make general public comment, uh, please come forward, state your name, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Uh, over here. Uh, is there anybody on Zoom? We no have hands being raised. No hands raised. We have no public comment registered at this time. If anyone would like to give public comment, we do ask that you come up and please fill out a form with us so we do have it for the record. Anybody? We have no public okay. comment, Mr. Mac Chair. Mac Rossi for the record. Um, just take a moment. This is a sad moment for me. After 12 years off and on on this board, this is my last month for at least a year. I want to thank everybody and all the board for their patience, the staff, and uh, it's been a delight. I really am going to miss it. I, I don't want any parties or parades or anything. Just a certificate saying I did 12 years. That'll be enough for me, but thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Can I steal your tagline? Delighted to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for your service, Mac. If there's no public comment, we'll move to item A3, which is uh, approval of the agenda. Uh, has the board members have a chance to review the agenda? Are there any changes recommended to the agenda? Mac Rossi, for the record, I'd like to move the, uh, make a motion to move the, approve the agenda for December 13th. Carly Borchard, I'll second. Thank you. We have a, could I? Uh, have a show of hands for <laughs> everybody in aye. favor. <laughs> aye. 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 Okay, motion appro approved unanimously. Thank you. The agenda is approved as is. Uh, moving into the minutes, uh, we had two in the uh, the package, one back from August 9th, and I noticed there was there was somebody on that one, a certain Kathleen Taylor who was reporting on the Arlington Bridge. Was that you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seems like a seems like a a long a long time ago, and then the the last meeting when we actually met uh, September thirteenth. Uh, have you all had a chance to uh, look at the minutes? Any comments or corrections? No changes. The only comment I just wanted to add is that they were both very very good in my mind. I don't have any corrections. I think on the first one, the basic tack was to say that if there was conversation, it was the board members that were talking. In the September one, specific people were called out by name. Just for what it's worth, my preference is to be as specific as possible to that. I, so in general. That said, do I have a motion to uh, approve the minutes of August 9th and September 13th, 2022? Harley Borchard, I will move to approve both the August 9th and September 13th minutes. Bryce Chisholm, I'll second. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. Okay. Motion app approved for both of those minutes. Thank you. Moving on to A5 with the council liaison report. And Council Member Taylor, the floor is yours. I found the pictures of the artwork. If you want to put them on the projector, I can see if I can. Oh, wow, Samantha's really tall here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, Kathleen Taylor, for the record, 
Um, Mr. Rossi, thank you for your endless service and commitment to our community. We will find a spot for you someplace, yeah. guaranteed. <laughs> you met Abby and she is very creative and she will, she will work us through this process, help us get through this process. So the first thing I have is, um, I know we were trying to get some more board attendance and participation. We did send out an email to folks who have missed a couple meetings saying that if you're not here, we don't hear from you, you're gonna be removed from the board. Um, we have some new applicants that are interested, which I'm really excited about. So we'll work on that when we get back from break. Um, oh, wait, hold on, just turn it over. Oh. Oh, hold on, <laughs> technology. There were some new improvements at West Park. Um, and I wish, um, you know, this is all based all from your previous councilwoman, Neoma Jardin. I believe that's a balloon. Those were installed in the last couple of months. So if you have a chance, get up there and take a look at it. It's a beautiful park. I'm super excited about that stuff. More good news, um, talk to RTC today. We are looking at getting that stoplight, working with NDOT to get that stoplight in at McCarran and Keystone. Those improvements are gonna be coming. We're going through some of the design right now. Probably won't see it until maybe next year. Um, it'll take some time. Our next meeting is based on the conversations that we had at our last NAB. NAB is gonna be over um, in the fire station on MAN. And um, hopefully we can get some more participation um, there. And I know Gary um, is working on some neighborhood park stuff that we might be able to look at as we look um, to make these boards, these meetings a little bit more effective and uh, meaningful and valuable. And then we brought donuts. See, the story behind the donuts, if anybody's listening, is we tried to get cookies, but we wanted to buy them from somebody in Ward 5. So... Homage was closed on Tuesdays and insomnia cookies are there. We, we can uh, get them during the right time or something. So we found donuts in our, in our ward. Anybody who wants to open a cookie shop in ward five, let me know and we'll see how we can get that done. I think, I think that's it. Um, oh, I have one very important announcement and um, I wish, is Eric LaRue here? No, he's not. But Eric LaRude, I heard, called Neoma Jardin at uh, the Downtown Improvement Project and said that downtown Reno looked cleaner than he has ever seen it on one of his runs. So we are making progress. And we got the same comment from a developer who was um, giving a tour to prospective investor downtown. So I think we are moving forward. and. Uh, I'm super proud of our team at the city of Reno. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Happy holidays. Can we ask a couple questions? Sure. Since we have you. Maybe. Great. Um, so I was unfortunately not able to make last Wednesday's meet and greet, which I've tried to attend to all of yours. So I heard you're quite the pool shark. Um, thank you. <laughs> I know where that came from. Um, so I was just curious if you had any updates, anything that you wanted to share from that meet and greet. I think that there was some information shared possibly about the Garson overpass and or. Oh. Anything that I might have missed. You know to... what? Maybe we should talk afterwards. Okay. I, I think I'll have some more information that I would feel comfortable putting on the record. But um, yeah, I think uh, uh, there are some improvements coming to IED. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Kathleen, I had just uh, one thing, I think I'd emailed you about it, but I wanted to uh, just thank uh, RPD Lieutenant uh, Browett, and I don't know if you can give some thanks to him too. Who is um, it? But I wanted to put that oh, on, the, the on the record. Traffic. Yeah, I wanted to put that on the record because um, for anybody that lives downtown and sees the raceway that Sierra has become, um, it was, really interesting to see the signs going up saying it was the second pedestrian zone in the city. Um, so a lot of people in the montage were happy about that. It also safeguards a little bit more uh, the corner of First and Sierra, where there are a lot of people that cross there and gather there. It's a very, very big meeting place. 
So uh, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> it was something that was, was his initiative. He also told me that he has plain closed offices that actually walk out into the sidewalk, into the crosswalk to see if people slow down. Now that's, that's dedication, <laughs> probably more than I would do. But I thanked him very much, but I wanted to go on the record to say that, and we recognize that the effort that his staff is making and the residents are very happy about that. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On to um, agenda item A6, the staff liaison report. Uh, I was wondering, Abigail, would you mind standing up and, and just telling us something about your background, about yourself, and uh, what you're looking forward to doing as the as liaison? Mr. Chair, if I can interject before we do that, just so I can do an introduction. Sure. Um, and then if she's comfortable with that space. Do you want her up yonder or from this microphone? Are you comfortable? I'm fine. I just like to hear from her. It's always, it's, it's good to have her on board. Absolutely. So for the record, Ashley Turney, Chief Innovation and Experience Officer. Uh, so within our office, we oversee the Council Support Division in which the community liaisons currently report. They provide services to all seven elected officials in order to ensure that we are maintaining and improving proper service delivery with constituents and outreach with community issues and support for council. Uh, with that, you are familiar with your previous community liaison, Amy Pennington was previous, uh, recently promoted into another position within the city. And so we are excited for her future opportunities. Additionally, the rest of the team are also superstars and were also promoted simultaneously into new positions. Uh, so we've got a new crop of liaisons that we are training tonight. Uh, so I am happy to introduce Tyler Shaw is going to be one of our community liaisons. Uh, Jana, there she is. It was like Jana Morales is here also as well. Um, and then we have Abigail Mayorga, Abby, as she is known, and she will be supporting Council Member Taylor for Ward 5, among some other duties. So I am happy to introduce her and we'll turn it over for her brief introduction. And so she will be your contact for this now on the go forward. Uh, good evening, everyone. For the record, uh, Abigail Mayorga. I am the new community liaison for Ward 5. I am very, very excited to work with uh, these neighbors in this community and see what I can help uh, Council Member Taylor succeed for you guys. Um, background, fun fact, uh, a little bit of military, a little bit of federal, a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm just really excited. If you guys ever need anything, my contact information is on the website. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. It's good to have you on board. Anything we can do to help. Okay, so uh, that's A6. Moving on to the business items. Uh, the first one, B1, discussion of attendance. Uh, I was, was this something that came from the discussion that we had last time? Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I can fill in a little bit of information for context for the board if you would like. That would be very helpful. Thank you. This is a previous request from the board. As was mentioned, there have been some ongoing issues with attendance of some of your members. Um, ongoing attendance leads to systemic issues as it relates to quorum, means that development projects can't be heard because we are subject to open meeting law restrictions. Um, also, it's rather inconvenient for those of you who have made the commitment to ensure that you are here for the meeting and if we don't have quorum, we cannot proceed with the business. Uh, so this was something that was brought forward. We reviewed the resolution. The resolution is silent on removal beyond they can be removed at the council member's discretion. And so in communication with council member Taylor, she has indicated that the attendance is something that's very important to her. So we've sent out notification to the members who have not been present with their attendance record with the understanding that if they did not communicate or participate in tonight's meeting, then they will be removed from the NAB, creating future vacancies and opportunities. So at this time, that's update. There's no action needed from this body. We will send out formal notification if we've received resignation or additional spots. As Kathleen, Council Member Taylor, excuse me, mentioned, uh, there is some interest. We do have some applications on file and additional folks. This is also a reminder to everyone in the community. We are recruiting for NAM members on a continuous basis. Uh, the applications are available at the reno.gov website in which you can submit for application and review. And we will bring those forward as time permits. But that is your update for now. Council member. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Council member Borchard. Um, council member. Wow, I'm just promoting <laughs> myself tonight. Sorry, guys. 
guess I've just heard that word so many times tonight. Um, not member Borchard. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for taking that on. It's been kind of a long time coming. And I think that was at my request. So I really appreciate you guys doing that. And I will look very forward to having some new people come on board, especially me using Mac. So Here's don't get break. me going. <laughs> thank you. Are there any other comments from the board members on this item? Okay, we shall move on to B2. Uh, this is our first development project, I believe, for at least uh, months. six months, is it, that long? Yeah. So um, just to, as an overview, um, we have, I think, Joey, you're here for uh, to represent planning. I know that uh, we appreciate the help uh, that you give and that you, you're here. Leah said you were fully conversant with these projects. So. Yeah, I don't know if I'm an expert on this, but I, I saw your email, which was forwarded, and I'm here to answer any process questions that you may have. Thanks for allowing me to attend. Very good. Um, so just as a, uh, just a, a reminder that as you go through, we go through this, uh, this, uh, these two projects, that if you have some comments, there's an opportunity, and it's listed on the agenda on the online form where you could give your comments. And Hopefully they are of you sometimes with the planning commission. I know uh, from Kathleen that uh, what you've come from. So we have two tonight. Uh, the first one is, I guess they are from the same developer. Uh, do we have somebody representing them today? Mr. Chair, we have Stacy Huggins representing the applicant's representative is present. She will be moving forward with both of her projects together. Hello, oh, Stacy. Nice to meet you. Hello, good evening. Welcome, welcome to the NAB. Thank you. Um, so you, it made sense to me too, it was going to be my first question, if you wanted to do them separately, um, but you're going to look at them both together. Yes. So I'll turn it over to you, and uh, then we'll go back to the board and see what questions or comments they have. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, so for the record, Stacey Huggins with Wood Rogers. Um, I am representing the developer in this um, project, and it is two items, as you noted, um, but I thought given their... Um, location so close together they are really separated by a parcel which is why they are two separate cases i would just touch on them kind of combined and then um hit on them separately um as we go through this nope <laughs> how about this one nope <laughs> hold on <laughs> Technical it's been a little while since i've had to run a meeting oh. Give me just a minute, we'll migrate through. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Second time charm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, just touching location on these um, two projects. Uh, the two projects individually, Grand Point North and Grand Point South, are highlighted there in the yellow boxes on the screen. Uh, they are both located um, east of Rob Drive, south of Mayan. They both front on Grand Point. If you're familiar with that area, um, that's a shopping center to the direct west of there. Uh, the north parcel is a uh, little over five acres and the south parcel is a little over two acres. Um, on the north parcel, if you are familiar with these projects, you've probably seen some grading work on that property. There has been some stockpiling that's happened on that property over the years. Um, as a result of Mayan's construction, as a result of the post office construction, um, those have all been um, permitted correctly through the city of Reno, so there's not any illegal stockpiling or grading that's happened on that property. On the southern piece of the property, it's primarily undisturbed. There's a little bit of stockpiling on there, again, from when the post office was constructed, but they're generally in its natural um, condition. These um, are considered infill projects as they are surrounded on all sides by development, whether that's existing residential uh, to the south or um, east or to the north or the existing commercial to the west. 
Um, just touching on the master plan and the zoning, the exhibit in the upper left-hand corner is the master plan. It is currently designated suburban mixed use. And then when we look at the zoning, the two parcels have very different zoning designations. The north parcel is zoned neighborhood commercial and the south parcel is zoned multifamily 14. Both of those um, zoning designations are in conformance with the master plan and both are supportive of what the um, townhome project is that we're bringing forward. In both cases, those zoning designations are intended to provide a transition between that higher intensity, non-residential commercial shopping center to the west and the single family residential to the east and the south. So looking at the project now, and I've combined the two together just to give you a, a quick snapshot, and then I will talk about each of them individually. As a whole, the project includes 108 single family attached townhome units split between the two parcels. Um, on the north, we are asking for a tentative map and a conditional use permit and the CUP under the NC zoning is required for more than 50 units. And then we are exceeding um, the cuts and fills threshold on the north property. Um, and then on the south property, again, it's a tentative map and a conditional use permit. And in this case, under the multifamily 14, we need the CUP because we have more than 20 units. Um, I mentioned previously on the zoning, those zoning designations and this proposed use are really a logical transition between that commercial grocery store to the west and the single family detached um, to the north, east and south. Um, and really most importantly, this project brings forward a piece of or a product, a housing product that is missing in this area that the city continues to see a demand for that missing middle attainable housing um, that can be a more dense project than we might see in a traditional neighborhood. Oh, it won't go now. There we go. <laughs> okay, so starting uh, with the north, uh, again, this is the property that's zoned um, neighborhood commercial. This site is a little over five acres and this tentative map is specifically for 78 single family attached townhomes. Uh, the density with this project is 15.3 units to the acre. Under the NC zoning, there is not a um, limit on the density. So that density is um, in conformance with the overall area um, or the master plan and the zoning. Um, there is also approximately two acres of this site that are um, common area, including, and you can see on the eastern edge of this property, a fairly significant uh, landscape buffer along that edge where this project has um, intentionally stayed out of that area to create um, a nice buffer over there and also not impact the steep slopes that exist on that eastern edge of the property. Um, so this is designed as a cluster development. Cluster developments allow for smaller um, in the form of narrower lot sizes. So that's what's represented in this project. It's typical with a townhome project. Uh, as I said, the steeper slopes have been identified as common area, and that's the steeper slopes on the east side. Uh, that helps to limit the area of disturbance. If we were touching over there, obviously the grading and the earthwork would be significantly more than what we're um, doing as the project is designed. Um, we, as this project is designed, you can see on the image includes a mix of two and three unit buildings. So um, we've done that strategically. So you don't have rows of the exact same model facing the streets and or facing interior to the paseos. Uh, the project includes private streets that are 28 feet wide uh, with driveways that are six feet in depth so that um, people can't park in them. Uh, the common areas, again, that would be the paseos that are internal to the project, uh, as well as the areas around the perimeter will all be maintained by an HOA, which is one of the requirements for the cluster development. And then I think very importantly, one of the things that one of the big benefits that this project and also the South project bring are improvements to Grand Point. If you're familiar with this area, you would know that there is sidewalk 
and curb and gutter in front of the post office, but it does not connect to the existing neighborhoods to the south or to the north to Mayan. So with these projects, we will bring in curb gutter and sidewalk that provides that pedestrian connectivity and links all of the um, access along Grand Point, um, which is a, a, a really important aspect given that there is a school um, south of here nearby. So we are providing that connection. The project includes um, sidewalks interior to also ensure that there is access through the project to the sidewalks externally. And because um, it's 78 units, just there's really not a significant traffic impact with these. Um, we did have a traffic analysis or a, um, a traffic, I don't call it an analysis, I'm sorry, the word is escaping me. We did look at it with a traffic engineer. The study was included in our packet and they um, identified that this project would um, generate 40 p.m. peak hour trips. So it's well below having to do a full traffic impact study for this project. So moving to the south, um, and again, this is the property that's zoned multifamily 14. Uh, this is a little over two acres in size. This project is planned with 30 units at a density of 13.3 units to the acre, which again is consistent with the uh, multifamily 14, where the density is 14 units to the acre, right? So we're right within that um, density allowance. The common area on this project, um, again, given the small size of this piece of property, is a little over one acre, but that's 46% of the site um, preserved in common, common open space. Um, same, a lot of the same things I touched on on the north, smaller lots, steeper slopes along the east preserved as common area, um, enhanced treescape along the southern boundary where that proposed um, single family attached product is adjacent to the existing single family detached product in that existing neighborhood on the south boundary. Um, in this project, we do have a mix of two, three, and four unit buildings. As you can see, so the four unit buildings are located on the eastern side of this project um, with the smaller units in the middle and then the three building or the three unit buildings out on the west side. Again, with the private streets in this project. Um, and this project uh, was designed to maintain the existing access that goes into the post office. So um, that road on the north side is currently being used and it is an access for the post office. So we were um, a little bit constrained in having to work within that current access, but as you can see, um, we've matched that and we were able to make it work. Um, I do wanna note that the access um, shown on the bottom to Backer Way will be a gated emergency only access. So that is not a through road. Um, the fire department will have access to that. That's really there um, for emergency access, but also for utilities to go through that area. So um, again, there will be no access proposed going to the south into that existing neighborhood. Um, and this project with 30 units, um, we're looking at 15 p.m. peak hour trips. So just um, so you can see a little example of what the units um, are proposed to look like. Um, so the top image is the quote unquote front door. It's what will face the paseos internally. Um, and then the garages will actually face, they're actually considered the rear um, and they will face the private roadways um, or, or that function a lot more like an alley than a street, if you will. And this is the three unit building example. And then um, this is the four, or sorry, the two unit example. And so on the top, um, you can see the front, again, that would be facing the Paseo and the back. And then I just took another um, example. So you could sort of see the difference in the um, proposed architecture for each of the different types of buildings. So they're not all the same. They're intentionally designed to be a little bit different. They look and feel um, very much like a single family um, home and a town home that you would see in um, new projects. That um, is the project, projects, if you will. Um, I am available for any questions that you might have. And we have a couple of other team members here if there's something that I can't answer. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Before I ask the questions, I forgot to ask, was there any public comment uh, submitted to the NAB in writing or any other there's on these? No, we've not received any public comment. Okay. So, 
Do we want the city staff to make a presentation before we go into comments, or do you want to wait? I'm not sure that he was prepared, that was a very uh, prepared thorough. to make a, a presentation, were you? That was a very no, yeah. We we typically don't okay. give presentations at these, and I think Stacy covered it excellently. Okay. So, I but agree. I'm here. I'm here for questions on the process. Okay, Absolutely. Great. Yeah, I was going to say that was a very thorough presentation. I'm just used to getting some two cents out of the city if there's any technicalities. So if there are none, um, I don't know that I have a whole lot of comments. Um, I think my only personal concern is with the one exit and entrance in and out of both of the um, developments. Not so much for the smaller south project, but mainly for the northbound. I don't know that there is possibility of having a secondary access, but that would make me personally nervous just for what it's worth. Um, but I do appreciate the information and details on the traffic study, and I sincerely appreciate how much common area I see backing those other homes. So my one question would be, has there been any outreach to the neighbors directly affected? So, Other than um, just the notification. Stacy Huggins, for the record. Um, there has not been. We have not reached out to anyone yet. Um, we certainly can reach out to the neighbors um, individually, but we are really still trying to address the initial comments from staff, and we came here tonight. Um, if there are neighbors that are concerned, um, I'm more than happy to meet with them, um, and I'm sure the developer would be happy to talk to them as well. Um, I also just wanted to, I, I neglected to point this out to you, Ashley. Would you mind just pulling my presentation back up? Because I, I do want to just point out, and I, this, I apologize, I, I blew right over this. So let's do this one. On, on, the, on the South project, because there's only 30 units, we did not need a secondary access, right? On the North project, we do have um, a secondary fire access up there in the Northeast corner, you can see it's gated. So um, we do have one point of primary access, but that secondary emergency access does exist in that North corner. Right. So, Thank you very yeah, much. No Thanks problem. for pointing that out. For sure. Anything else? I think that's it for me. Okay. Um. Carol, I was going to come this way, but let's. Oh, I'm sorry. You can go. Carol. Are these units for sale or for leasing? They will be a for sale product. Okay, thank you. What was your. Yeah, Bryce Chisholm. Um, I guess I kind of <laughs> just worry that it's so many packed into there. It seems very dense. And I'm. I like the infill because I know that lot. I was at that post office today. Um, so I like that you're filling that in and putting houses there. I know that you said a six foot driveway. Yeah. So is it possible that each one has two cars and then eventually Grand Point becomes like a parking lot? Um, so the depth of the driveway is six feet to intentionally discourage people from parking. And um, the project has been designed with parking areas strategically provided so that guests will park inside of those parking spaces. There is obviously some opportunity for people to park out on Grand Point, um, but we, have, we think we've provided parking to account for guest parking within the project. Plus each unit will have a garage. So we anticipate that the people living in those townhomes will park in their garages. So it's a one car garage. Uh, there are two car garages. Okay. I can pull the architecture back up um, if you want to see that, but they are designed as two car garages. Okay. And then on the north project, you said it was two and three unit buildings? Correct. But in your design here, there's two fours right up on the top left. You're right. I missed the fours. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then just, I, I guess I just worry about the traffic on May Ann there. There's also two other projects happening that are already under construction on May Ann and then back over on Charlotte at the moment. So I was just wonder if you say that it's a uh, 15.3 duplexes per acre. So is that actually 30 per acre? Because they're duplexes? No, it's I don't um, know how that works. no, the 15.3 units to the acre counts for each 
individual unit. So it, it's really, if you look at the three pack, there's three units within that three pack. And so that density is um, based on the number of units, not not the building, right? So it's not it's not the number of buildings on the site, it's the number of units within the overall project. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Rossi, you have questions? Mac Rossi for the record. I got several questions I'd like. Uh, first one, just to get it out of the way. Why are you presenting this project now after it's already started? Hmm. Usually they come in before as this is what we plan on doing. We're looking for opposition or whatever there might be. You've already, the grading is already being done. Um, if there's, um, so let me just go backwards. The any grading that you've noticed on this property has not been done as a part of this project. There should be no earthwork up there. Um, we were just up there. Um, there was some stockpiling on the property as a result of previous projects, but there has not been any grading work done on this site. There may have been test pits done um, from a soils perspective, um, but we have not done any grading work on this property. So we, we are, um, and perhaps staff can confirm this, we are following the current process. We submitted our applications, staff is, re is reviewing them. Um, the SNAB is the first meeting that we've been able to be agendized for. Okay, thank you for that. Um, where Grand Point, is it exit on to Mayen? Grand Point. I mean, Grand Point, excuse me. Grand Point intersects with Mayan. These projects, the access from both projects is directly on to Grand Point, not on to Mayan. Okay, so once they get on that street and they need to go out to a main drive, such as Mayan, is there a divider? I, did, I didn't have, I don't remember there being a divider there that might, where you could only make a right hand turn or there something. There is not a divider okay. at that intersection. But they okay. can take a left and go out to Rob as well, correct? Correct. Okay, good. Get on to um, one thing that always comes up, and I hope that it is put in your. You say that the HOA will be maintaining the project uh, or uh, the the development after it's done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, has this been specified that they take care of their own snow plowing, or will it be? I don't know the answer to that, but I can certainly have that conversation okay. with the developer as we go through the process. The, the reason I ask is because we get developments coming in later where the people are there saying, how do we get our streets plowed and everything else? So right. it, uh, uh, it's something that we really ran into several times. Sure. Uh, and the other last one was when you have your garage, you, you can pull in your garage. Is there enough room for a car to be parked on the driveway between the garage door and the street? No, the driveways have intentionally been designed um, to be too short to, uh, too short's the wrong word, but to be six feet in depth to discourage illegal parking. Um, and that is something that has been consistent with townhome projects. Um, the city has had problems where if they are bigger than six feet, people will park in them and then they hang out into the street. And so um, six feet really does discourage um, drivers from parking in that driveway and forcing them to utilize the garage as their parking space. Okay, the only reason I ask is because sometimes there's a limitation on how many cars can park in the development. And sometimes if you make enough room between the garage door and the uh, sidewalk or whatever it might be there, so the, still not hanging in the street, gives the residents an opportunity to at least, if it's a one car garage, at least put two cars somewhere without having to go search for a spot. Sure. But, Thank you. <clears throat> You're on. Thank you, Gary Cecil, for the record. I just have a, um, some comments for you, a couple of questions. And then, Joey, um, a couple of clarifications still. I know Leah gave me some answers, but I'm still not there yet. I want you to say to me, I've been looking for what I see as a, almost a, a prime example of what an info project could look like. You hear that word a lot in some buzzwords. I know our council members ears perk up when she hears infill. <laughs> She's not hearing right now. Um, but anyway, it, I drove up there today and um, it's amazing to me, the way I would characterize it as I was driving there was, uh, we've all had those jigsaw puzzles that sit on the table for weeks at a time and you're missing two pieces. I mean, this is a jigsaw here that has been with these pieces missing for a very, very long time. Why did you decide to develop these now? 
the timing is right. I, I think you can look at, and I don't want to speak um, necessarily on the subject for the developer or the property owner, but I think you can look at where Reno is going right now and the demand for housing that is um, attainable and single family attached townhomes um, meet and, and can fulfill that need as opposed to single family detached. Um, and on these two pieces of property, we would not have been able to do a single family detached. Um, they both would have allowed multifamily projects. Um, we didn't think that multifamily project was the appropriate use for these two properties. Single family attached seems more appropriate. It makes people um, feel like they are living in a single family neighborhood, a true single family neighborhood, even though it's not traditional single family detached. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but again, thank you for filling in the two pieces of the puzzle. It's interesting to see. I did like the outer design. Um, I thought that the way the back and front was staggered gave the impression, you know, of it, it was certainly separate. It was certainly separate units, but I, I could see the whole contiguous building. So I think in terms of how it looks, and I, if I can understand correctly, there's vegetation that's around the perimeter of both but there's no wall or anything like that, correct? Um, there is a little bit of wall okay. around, uh, particularly on that east side where there's some slope that happens between this project parcel and the existing residential, mm -hmm. um, but it's not it's not a significant wall and it it will be screened with trees um, to, to mitigate and provide a nice visual transition between this proposed project and the existing residential to the east. Okay. As okay. well as, mitigating for the post office right there we, we did show and we do have proposed um along on the north project along the south boundary adjacent to the post office and then on the south project along the north boundary to screen um the residential from the post office or the post office from the residential okay that makes sense i think aesthetically it will it will look quite nice um, in terms of the, the traffic, the only thing I noticed there today is maybe it's Christmas, but there was an awful lot of traffic going in and out of the post office um, and people going in the wrong end because it's supposed to be one way. Um, do you, was that counted by headway transportation in terms of the safety of coming out of the one exit into uh, Grand Point? I, um, I don't know for sure the answer to your question, but I imagine that they looked at it as part of our um, estimate for trips. Again, we were not, because of the unit count, we didn't um, meet the threshold to do a full traffic study. Okay. Um, so they would not have been required to look at what's the traffic in the post office, particularly the week before Christmas um, versus any other time of the year. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know for sure if they looked at the post office traffic. Okay. Um, one of the things, I mean, the findings that you included in the documentation or that were included, uh, it's very thorough. You kind of checked every box. That still needs to be validated, I guess, by, um, uh, by the city planners. But uh, I was struck actually about the question of infrastructure. It came up in the, the Ward 4 discussions a lot in the most recent election. What comes first? infrastructure before development or development for infrastructure. Well, you have a, an infill here. So the assumption seems to be that the infrastructure is sufficient. Um, I guess that, I don't have a question, but a comment, I guess that just has to play out in some way to make sure. I don't know if the schools are capacity right now. Uh, I mean, there's, oh, that reminds me, what would be the way that uh, parents would get their children to school, the local schools from there? What would be the what would be the route? Are there's any walking routes or anything like that? So because we're building the sidewalk along Grand Point, we will provide that pedestrian connectivity to the school that's located to the south. So I would guess, and I don't, I mean, we don't know, right? But I would guess that folks will come out of the neighborhood and go south on Grand Point to walk their children to school if that's um, the way they're going. Um, 
just to go back in terms of the infrastructure conversation, our engineers did look at the infrastructure and confirmed that there was available capacity to serve both projects. So um, we can confidently say the infrastructure does exist again, because this is infill, it's all, it's all around us and um, development has always been anticipated on these parcels. So the infrastructure does exist. It can accommodate what we're bringing forward. Um, and our engineers did look at that. To your question about the schools, because you mentioned it, I did reach out to the school district. I asked them to forecast for me the number of students that would be added based on these unit counts. I send them the site plan and I say, here's what I have. How many units or how many children do you think will add to the district? Um, as I recall, the number was um, a total of 14 for the north and significantly less on the south. I, again, I'm sorry, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but they basically said these smaller projects are not going to have an impact on our school system um, as it stands today. So we did reach out. We have done our homework. We, we do think that these are appropriate infill development pieces in this area. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I just want to turn over to uh, Joy now. Uh, one of the things I still don't understand is the overlay and if it has, what, if any impact it has, the McQueen neighborhood planning area. I know like in Verdi, Verdi the overlay uh, there, Morton Garson was very, very critical. Um, does this have any major impacts on this, these two developments? In, in general, it works the same way. However, the Mortensen Garson overlay is much more complicated and there's a, a legal history with that one, but you follow the standard zoning, which is neighborhood commercial or multifamily 14. And then the overlay adds additional requirements. This is the McQueen overlay. It has many fewer requirements or additional areas, which that overlay covers. Um, you basically, you apply the overlay standards first. So if there's a stricter standard in the overlay, that's what you go with. Let's say for example, the overlay says you need to have a 100 foot setback and standard MF 14 zoning says only 10. You apply the overlay. If the overlay is silent, you would just apply the standard base zoning. So that's sort of how it works. Is there anything you're aware of or Leah is aware of right now that is an issue at all? She's looking at it. Um, okay. We're all looking at it uh, as a, a staff to review it. And if there's anything that is not in line with the overlay, we'll address that with the applicant and we'll make sure that it's addressed with this proposed development. Okay. May I piggyback on that? Uh, certainly, go ahead, Carly. Carly Portrait for the record. I'm just curious, has, this, has the zoning that is currently specified on both of these parcels always been, or has this recently changed with the master plan, just out of curiosity? Thanks for the question. I don't have it in front of me. Maybe the applicant might know, but I, I don't think there's been any rezoning okay. on this recently. It's been pretty standard. Okay. And you did say the north parcel was neighborhood commercial, which does allow for residential. Yes. And the south is MF14. Correct. Great. And I am not aware of a zone change on this property. That, okay. That it, it could have happened longer than I went back in my research, but I am not aware of anything. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. And just, just one final comment, um, just to support what uh, my colleague Carly said, I would encourage you to reach out to the neighborhoods too. Now, the fact that maybe they haven't paid attention at this point um, and come to this meeting or made any comments doesn't mean that they won't. And it's probably better to head them, head them off of the pass. Let them know what's happening. They're probably gonna be happy. <laughs> I actually do have two comments from neighbors oh. that may or may not help, but I figured since we're here and discussing it, I'll share just for the record. Um, we had one neighbor that was very close to this residential um, to your east that was complaining um, more, more about the Verdi developments and how many more customers that's going to bring to those shopping centers, specifically Rayleigh's and how often she goes to her neighborhood store and they don't have products or services that she's after because they're sold out and the, the um, shelves are empty. I have personally never experienced that. I'm just sharing what she actually came to the NAB and shared. And then an additional comment that I received was from another gentleman um, 
that really thought that this would be an ideal location for, I don't want to say seniors, but maybe like 55 plus or something like that because of the walkability, because of the accessibility, because of transportation being so close, you know, it's really ideal for some of that, but it's the same for students in my opinion too. So just to share a little bit of feedback. Thank you. Before we close discussion, are there any more comments? Bryce? I would just encourage any of the neighbors that came to the meeting tonight to voice a public comment later on tonight if you have one. Thank you. I don't think there's any other comments. Thank okay. you very much for the presentation and for the information. It was very well done. Thank you. And we'll close that, that item there. Thank you. Uh, going on to uh, Agenda C, Board Commission Committee Member Reports Announcements. Uh, Are we there's... doing project review forms on this? You prefer them electronic? Yes, thank we you. We prefer the board to please submit all of your comments through the online review form. That way we can ensure that that goes directly to the planning staff. Sorry. Paper makes the commute okay. harder. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any uh, board commission committee member reports or announcement, announcements for us? Got one off the park commission, Mac Rossi for the record. Anybody that's living near the old North Point uh, golf course or called Mountain Vista or Vista View, or I'm not sure what it's called now. They, uh, the park commission will be sending something over to this NAB specifying that they're going to change some of the pathways that are doing the surrounding area. And they look like they're coming pretty close to the property lines of some of these uh, residents. And they're going to be bringing the present, the, the Parks Commission has recommended they come to the NAB to present it here so that anybody has any points as far as whether it's uh, too close or whatever the case may be. That's coming attraction, which may come up in January. I'm not sure. Um, it's all on the Park Commission. Go ahead. Uh, on item C, are there any more announcements? Hearing none, we'll go on to future agenda items. Does anybody have any they'd like to place on the future items? Mac Rossi for the record. Um, I'd like to address to Joey Winters, am I correct? Uh, since I'm leaving, uh, I have brought up, uh, I was suggested we brought up a presentation by the county to show how they uh, present their projects uh, for who was left in the audience here. Developers don't have to come to us to bring a development for present, to make a presentation on it. It's up to them whether they want to. The county has come up with a new project where everybody has to come to their area and they form a committee and the committee goes ahead and uh, as I think you were, were you part of the, uh, the presentation from the county, how they're doing it? No? Okay, well, anyway, they have got it down to a committee that it has to have everybody be happy with what's going on right at the time before the developer goes any farther. Uh, it was presented to us. I think it's a great program. I think it, uh, I had one of somebody from the development had been at this, at that meeting about was it three months ago, four months ago, yes. as it was. And I'd like to see it continue to see whether the city may want to encompass part or all of that program into this into this uh, ward or the city. So uh, I, as a future thing, I'd like to have it on the agenda all the time and see how it's going. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Mac. Um, any other future agenda items? Carly? Carly Borchard for the record. I was just curious if we might be able to open the conversation with the liaisons because this is kind of the second go round here. Um, when COVID hit in 2020, we had actually scheduled and we were so excited to do a joint NAB cab. And that was scheduled and we had the agenda and everything ready to go. COVID hit, it got canceled. Um, so we were working with Amy and the um, county manager staff to get that reinitiated for January. And we were under the impression, or I was under the impression that that was going to happen. But now that Amy has been promoted, 
and we've got some change over here that might be too soon. I just don't want to rock any boats and I just want to make sure though that we keep it in focus and that that potentially happens. So we actually turning for the record chief innovation experience officer we will put that in our queue and reconnect with the county manager staff. Uh, one thing for consideration is based off of the NAB being scheduled in January for the Mayan fire station as Councilman just Taylor updated. Mm -hmm. uh, we will need to connect with them to see if that's an availability for them from a location. Uh, but we will ensure that this is brought forward at a future item. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Future agenda items. Um, the one thing I failed to ask on the Grand Point presentation was when it was scheduled to go to Planning Commission. I believe it's January 4th at this time. No, that's 14th, wrong. 11th, 14th, 12th. 18th. 18th. <laughs> Wednesday, Ooh, we January 18th. 18. 14 equals 18. Okay, to answer please. your question, it's scheduled for January 18th, and the residents will receive notification pursuant to our normal noticing process per NRS. And our next meeting would be before that. So maybe we could put this back on our agenda for our February meeting to just get an update. I know some of us will probably keep involved with it, but I'm just curious if we can get an, a formal update as that moves forward. We will put that one in the queue. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had just a couple of items potentially. It's been a long time because we we didn't have the opportunity to meet in November because of the election and then there were no development projects. We haven't had an RPD report for the longest time. I think I saw the data, but we never got a chance to discuss it. Ashley, do you know if that's going to be scheduled for January? Yes, I do. So we've had confirmation from the lieutenants that are covering the NABs and they will be coming on a quarterly basis. So they will be here January, April, July, and October. That feels right. They will be here in January. I have confirmation from the lieutenants. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, the other item, and I, I don't know if this is really within our purview, but um, I, I agree with uh, what uh, Council Member Taylor said, uh, that the downtown has seen well cleaned up. The only thing I still worry about is how we work with the homeless people. Uh, I know that, you know, that it's like in New York City, where there's a lot of a tough approach and maybe things it will be changing generally. But I wondered if, is there any opportunity to get some information from the CARES campus about what specific wraparound services are available now? When I try to encourage some of the folks I see to go there, and I know the ambassadors from the Ontario partnership will take them there, their question is, what are they gonna do for me? And I give them a general idea, but I just don't know enough to do more. And I think there's a lot of residents would benefit knowing what happens when someone's in goes to intake there? Mm -hmm. Besides feeding them, close, you know, helping them to get a, what are the other wraparound services that can help them move forward in their lives? Mm -hmm. So if there's any opportunity someone could collect that information or somebody from CARES Campus, I'd very much appreciate that. Okay, we That's can send one. the request over to county staff that manage the CARES Campus to see if they're available for presentation. Mm -hmm. If not, we can work on getting that information so now formally. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, in terms of uh, future agenda items, uh, we typically uh, rotate the chair, as Mac reminded me. Uh, does any, anybody feel uh, would like to take the chair next time, Bryce? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. No. <laughs> yeah. It would be Chisholm. No, I'll decline. It's okay. Mr. Chair, if I can interject, I I feel like this is public comment since we are a bit loose on your okay. item here is where I feel like you've transitioned us to. Okay. Thank I didn't you. want to forget that item. Yes. Uh, we do have an update that Councilmember Taylor wanted to ensure that the public is aware of the meet and greet opportunities with our two chief of police candidates mm. held on Thursday at Neal Road Recreation Center between 530 and 730. We wanted to make sure everyone is aware of that. There will be two candidates present uh, that the public will be able to meet and chat with if they are interested. Again, this is Thursday, December 15th at Neal Road Recreation Center from 5.30 to 7.30. Meet and greet with the two police chief candidates. 
Thank you. I forgot about that. It's very exciting news to uh, those two candidates. That's great. Okay, going on to uh, agenda item E, public comment. Oh, I is think is there anybody comment. in the audience? Pam McNeil would like to <laughs> hear public comment, and then Pam most certainly will fill out a form when she is done. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> Well, last minute, I guess I also have to add my welcome to our new liaison, which is great. Um, and I just have to, as we're talking about on the record or off the record, I have to put on the record that there was a zone change on that uh, project. I can't remember, you know, we always go before COVID, after COVID. I, I can't remember if it was before or after, but there was a zone change. Um, it'd be great if you could look it up, Joey, as to when it was. I know Nathan was the contact person on it. And I know the two of us talked and yes, even though it says neighborhood commercial that it does allow residential. Um, I don't know if there was someone else involved, a developer involved at the time, but uh, it is, I'd like it on the record that there was a zone change. Absolutely, I can look, I'll ask, you said Nathan Gilbert? Yeah. I can ask him okay. um, and then we can probably get it to the liaison and they can disseminate it to the NAB, although you're not on the NAB. If you wanna give me your email, um, okay. I can, get whatever, but we'll look at the history of it. I can't look it up on this computer. Oh, no, I'd have to go upstairs. Fine. No, absolutely. And I just, I, I meant I included in comments for um, the planning commission also. Yes, yeah, certainly. And and the planner that is reviewing this case, it's her job to do it. She's looked into that and she would probably know off the top of her head. Okay, but pleasure. thanks for bringing that. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. So just for clarification, um, did we select the next? Is it me? I'm happy to do it, but Carol would be up for, for. No, no still not quite ready. Okay, no worries. <laughs> then I will plan on being the um, chair next meeting. Thank, Thank you, Carol. We appreciate it. Just for the record, usually we have this on the agenda. Who is the next one? So it might yeah. be something. Might be something to consider. That the, it's on the agenda. It should be on the agenda. So we we do a agenda. rotation every meeting yeah. on the chair just to give everybody an opportunity. And That's it used right. to be in an actual agenda item so that we addressed it and made sure that you Got guys it. knew who the chair was for the next meeting. Okay, helpful. We will add that as an updated, we'll identify for template update from approval from you. Okay. Okay, um, if there's no more public comment, we'll move to adjournment. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Mac Rossi to make a motion to adjourn uh, the meeting. I hear a second. Carly Borchard, I'll second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Happy holidays, dear. Thank everyone. you very much to everyone. Thank you. Thank you.